Well, praise God, it is good to be in God's house this morning. Yes. Are you glad you're in God's house this morning? Yes. We've had a nice discussion earlier in the service, and uh, it's been some wonderful singing. We're glad to be here. What a wonderful place to be. God's people in God's house on the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. No place I'd rather be either. Thank you. Let's all turn in our Bibles, please, to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. And let's all stand, if we're able, as we read our opening text, Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, Father in heaven, we love you this morning. And we're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We're thankful for your love, your unbounded love for your people. Thank you so much. And I pray that you please be with us this morning. We can already feel your presence. We pray, though, that you would be with us in a special way and touch our hearts. As we read and hear your word, I pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying. We don't need to hear from Pastor Kimball. We need to hear from you. So please, Lord, teach us by your precious Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear what you are saying to your people. Amen. amen. And amen. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Amen. Amen. We just got through a series on the Lord's Prayer. And I'm directed by the Spirit of God to go back to the subject of prayer this morning as well. Jesus said to ask for those things which are needful in his prayer, that he taught us the Lord's Prayer, the model prayer. Yes. And in Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And he told the parable about the judge who was bothered at night by someone who wanted him to do something for them. And the judge said, go away. But because the woman did not go away, he gave her what she wanted. And that's the idea that Jesus conveyed to us. I know it sounds kind of silly. Why would he invite that upon himself? He's, he's saying basically, when you pray, don't give up. Amen. When you pray, don't give up. And that's what that scripture, which says, pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean that all you ever do all day long, every day is pray. It means that you pray and you don't give up. You don't give up. Amen. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. These are the words of Jesus. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Our Lord says to pray and not faint. He says to pray without ceasing. Are we a people who prays? I pray that we are. I hope we are. I don't know though, honestly. In my own personal life, do I pray enough? When I pray, do I give up? Do I pray so long? And then I say, well, I, I guess it's not the Lord's will. And I stop. 
We don't always know what God's will is, and he says to pray without ceasing, so we should pray without ceasing until we get a a confirmation that it's not his will and that it's not going to happen. We ought to pray and not give up. But if we pray and we don't hear one way or the other, we don't see one way or the other in our lives, you know, if, whether he's answered the prayer or not. For example, if we pray for healing for our body, do we pray only so long and then we give up? We are to pray without ceasing. Amen. Do we pray for understanding and then give up if we don't get understanding? No, we keep praying. So today, the subject is, what does the Bible say to pray for? What does the Bible say to pray for? We were taught the Lord's Prayer, and we had a whole series on it, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and it's found in Matthew chapter 6. Let's go there, and we'll read that. And Jesus taught us how to pray. Prayer is foundational to our faith. It is key. It is vital. Jesus spent much time in prayer. And when his disciples asked him how to pray, he said this. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we ought to pray thus. But there are a few other things that God said to pray for in the Bible that are not mentioned here. And I want to go over those this morning. Amen? Amen. First thing is found in Matthew chapter 5. Remember, we are to be a praying people. Amen? If we want to see a transformation in our lives, a transformation in this church we want to see wonderful things happen. We need to be a people who praise. Amen. Amen. A people that praise. Matthew chapter 5. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 5 beginning at verse 43 going down to verse 48. Part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is talking. He says, you've heard that it hath been said... Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Oh, my goodness. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, and that word perfect, as I've told you, means mature, grown up, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. I think that's so very self explanatory. We are to pray for our enemies. If we're to have true freedom and peace, we must heed these words of Christ. True happiness and joy cannot be achieved in a heart that hates. We shouldn't be a people known for our hate. We should be, what, what's the Bible say? They'll, they'll know you're my people because you have love one to another. We ought to love one another. 
And sometimes among our people, we will have people that will hate us. We will have people that will do harm to us, right? From time to time, we will have conflict. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Wherever there's people, there's going to be trouble. <laughs> it's just the way that it is. It's how things are. But when someone says something you don't like, if someone does something you don't like, I mean, it could be the littlest thing, and we just go ballistic all over it, you know? We shouldn't. We should have in our character this. We should have a peace. We should have a calm. We should have love in our hearts. God's people should be a people who loves. Now, the devil's crowd, they hate. They hate. We don't want to be like the devil's crowd. Amen. We want to be those who love. Amen. Amen. And we want to pray. And when you, Next time you feel like you want to just haul off and punch someone right in the face, pray for them. It's really hard to want to punch someone in the face if you're praying for them. Right? I mean, there are those times. It could be even people in the same church. I'm not talking about the obvious enemies. I'm talking about people that you, you, you love normally, right? <laughs> you love them normally. We should pray Amen. for them. We should pray for those who are acting as though they are our enemies. Because God says to pray for them. Amen. That's a good enough reason right there. I'll read it again. You've heard it said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. In another place it says, And so you will heap coals of fire upon their head. Amen. <laughs> he says, why? Because that will show that you are the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. If you love only those who love you, what are you doing different from anybody else? We need to be children of our Father in heaven. We need to have love in our hearts. We need to pray for our enemies. Amen? Amen. I know that's a hard one, but can I hear an amen? amen. All right. Amen. Got to love our enemies. That's one of the th other things. It's not in the Lord's Prayer that God says to pray for in his word. The Bible says to pray for our enemies, so we should do so. Yeah. Amen. We are to forgive. That is in the Lord's Prayer, to forgive one another. But it does, it's it, we, we're to pray. We're to pray for our enemies. That's hard. That's hard. That shows you are truly trying to be like Jesus. The people that nailed him to the cross, he prayed for them. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He knew that he had to die on that cross and that they were just doing what they were supposed to do. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They have to do this. Sometimes God sends people into our, uh, along our path for a little conflict so that we will grow. We learn something from it, don't we? Next thing I want to cover is pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 to 9, Proverbs 4, verses 5 to 9, we read this. It says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, talking about wisdom, forsake not wisdom, for she shall preserve thee, love her. And she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting. Get understanding. 
Exalt her and she shall promote. He's talking about wisdom and understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall, she shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Amen. Get wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom and pray for understanding. There's times when we feel puzzled. We don't know quite what to do. We don't know the right path to take. We need to pray for wisdom and for understanding. Have you ever been there? I don't know quite what to do, Lord. Please help me with this. Please give me wisdom. Please give me understanding. That should be your prayer. Not any, meeny, miny, mo. Pray for wisdom. Amen. Pray for understanding. Because if we get wisdom and if we get understanding, it's going to promote us. It'll bring us honor. And it'll be an ornament of grace and a crown of glory, wisdom and understanding. Amen. 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 Are you glad you came to church this morning? Yeah. Amen. Solomon prayed for wisdom and he got it. He was called the wisest man on earth. And here's an example of it. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 16 to 28. 1 Kings 3, verse 16 to 28. Then came there two women. Solomon was, was king, and this is something that happened when Solomon was king. Then came there two women that were harlots unto the king, and stood before him. And the one woman said, My Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house, and I was delivered of a child with her in the house. And it came to pass the third day after that I was delivered that this woman was delivered also. And we were together. There was no stranger with us in the house, save we two in the house. And this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. She rolled over or laid on her baby, and, and the baby died. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear, the other woman said, Nay, but the living son is my son, and the dead son is thy and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. So you see the predicament here. They're fighting over whose baby the one that is alive is. Whose baby is it? This one that is still living. And so that's how they spake before the king. Then verse 23, then said the king, the one saith, this is my son that liveth, and thy son is the dead. And the other saith, nay, but thy son is dead, and my son is the living. And the king said, bring me a sword. I just love this. Bring me a sword. And they brought him a sword. They brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, O my Lord, give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. But the other said, Let it be neither mine nor thine, but divide it. Hmm. Then the king answered and said, Give her the living child, and in no wise slay it. He had no intention of cutting that baby in two. No intention whatsoever. He just knew that he would find out who the real mother was if he said that. Because the real mother wasn't going to let that happen. 
Mothers love unconditionally, often to their detriment. Mothers are like that. The king answered and said, give her the living child and in no wise slay it. She is the mother thereof. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to do judgment. Pray for wisdom and wisdom and understanding will exalt you. That's what the Bible says and this is what happened in Solomon's life. He prayed for wisdom. He got wisdom. Oh, had he, oh, he had wisdom. Amen. Oh, he had wisdom. And because of his wisdom, the whole world at that time respected him. Yeah. Amen. Pray for wisdom. Pray for understanding. It'll be a glory to you. It'll be wonderful to you. Pray for wisdom. Next, pray for the lost to be converted. Pray for the lost. The true Christian has a desire to lead others into the truth that they also might be saved. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, Proverbs 11, verse 30, it says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Amen. Amen. He that winneth souls is wise. Now, it's a basic truth of Scripture that only those who, whom God has chosen, only those whom God has chosen can be saved. It is he who draws us into the light. This Amen. is a Bible truth. Amen. Not everyone is going to be saved. Not, not everyone is chosen. Right. But God chooses those whom he will. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Chosen in him before the foundation of the world. And in John 6, 44, let's read it. John 6, 44, it says, no one can come to me. Jesus is talking. No one can come to me. Did you hear that? No one can come to Jesus except the father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus also said in John 15, 16, John 15, 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. Amen. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. He was talking to his disciples, but here again, Jesus does the choosing. God does the choosing. He draws the ones that he has chosen unto himself. And I'm telling you, those that were chosen before the foundation of the world in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, those people, they will come in. Yeah. The thing is, you don't know who is and who isn't. So you preach the word. You just throw it out there. Amen. You preach the word. Yeah. You share Christ. Because you don't know who is chosen and who isn't. But the ones who are chosen, they will get it. And God will use his word that you speak to draw them in. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. We're to be busy throwing out seed and he will do the rest. But where do we spread seed and to whom do we go? In Matthew chapter 5... Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. Amen? Amen. Let your light so shine. Is your light shining in the world? I'm just asking, don't answer. Is your light shining in the world? Are you that shining light that might, lead, that might lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ? Think about it. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Also, Luke chapter 14 Luke chapter 14, verse 23. 
The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Go out and compel them to come in. Tell others of Jesus. Tell others of his love and his grace and his mercy. Tell others about Jesus and what he's done for you. Compel them to come in. A wonderful story that I heard about a a preacher that was on the Titanic as the Titanic was going. There were several preachers there. As the Titanic was sinking, this preacher gave his life jacket to someone else or his, his, what do you call that? The circle thing? Life preserver. Life preserver. He, he's, he gave his life preserver to somebody else. And he was, it was recorded of the people that survived. It was recorded that this preacher, he swam from person to person because he knew that, that the end was near. It might be near. They may die. And so he was swimming from person to person, compelling them to come in. He was telling them about the love of Jesus. He died. But he was, till his very last breath, he was compelling people to come in. The Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. That means you tell others about Jesus. You tell others about his love and his grace and his mercy. You tell others about what Jesus has done for you. He is the redeemer of his people. He was telling others till the very end. Who should we tell? The Bible says to throw out the seed, but more specifically, if you can receive it, Jesus said to go unto the lost people of Israel. In Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 to 7, these 12 sent Jesus forth. He sent his disciples forth to go and bring them in. He sent them forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Where did he tell them to go? He said, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to the Samaritans. Now the Samaritans, I gotta explain this. The Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. But at this time, at the time of Jesus, they were long gone out of there. The lost tribes of the house of Israel They were not there anymore, but these were heathen. These were Assyrians. Okay, so I need to explain that. But he says, don't don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go to uh, the Samaritans because your people aren't there anymore. They're not there. Amen. Amen. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It's just right here in the Bible. And some people have trouble with this, but it's what God's word says. Are you seeing it right there in front of you? Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. And and verse 7, it says, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Matthew chapter 15 now. Are you still with me? Amen. All right. God's word, the word of the Lord. Matthew 15, verses 22 to 28. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. Now, this was a woman of Canaan. Wasn't one of the covenant people. His disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. Then came she and worshiped him, 
saying, Lord, help me. She didn't take no for an answer. This should be us when we pray, right? <laughs> Just keep on. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray and not faint. Amen. Well, this is what she's doing, and she's not even one of the covenant people. But well, watch Jesus say. Verse 25, she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. <laughs> The media would have tore him up over this, wouldn't they? (laughs) He was Jesus, God in the flesh. It's what he said. It's what he said. He said it's not fit, not meat, to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord. She didn't dispute it. She said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Good answer. So Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Isn't God good? God is so good. There was no one that, when the Bible says that when people brought their sick to him, it says he healed them all. But this woman wasn't one of the covenant people. But because of her faith, He did it anyway. God is good. Didn't he say, didn't we read it just earlier? He makes his reign to fall on the just and on the unjust. God is good to all. And I love him for it. Romans chapter 9. Are you still with me? Romans chapter 9 verses 1 to 5. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Paul is saying here, I wish that I could be cut off from God if it would save my people. Amen. What was this? We're talking about pray for the lost to be converted. More specifically, pray for the people that God said to go to, to be converted. Amen? Yes. Where did the apostles go when Jesus sent them out? They didn't go where the heathen were. They went to where God's people were. Yes. It's just a historical fact. Paul is praying here, or he's he's saying here, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom to these Israelites pertains the adoption, the glory the covenants, the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. And of whom Christ came. Who, Who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. So pray for the lost, specifically for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. Did the Bible say this? Did I just read this out of the Bible? Were you reading along with me? God's word. Last thing I want to mention this morning is in Psalm chapter 122. Psalm 122. We're going to read the whole psalm. Psalm 122. And this is pray for peace. For God's people and God's house. Amen? Pray for peace for God's people and God's house. Psalm 122, verses 1 to 9. Let us read. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is compact together, 
whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks un unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That means pray for God's people. Pray for God's house. Amen. Amen. Pray for peace in Jerusalem. And I believe that it's, you know, the city, Jerusalem. But more than that is the people of God and the house of God. What was at Jerusalem? That's where God had placed his name. Amen. He said, I place my name there. And his house was there. Amen. And that's where his people went every year during the feasts, the major feasts. They're three times a year, Deuteronomy 16, 16. All God's people went to Jerusalem. So it's more than just the city, I believe. When it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, I believe it's more than that. It's just the city. It's, it's pray for God's people and pray for God's house. So, things the Bible says, tells us to pray for. Pray for our enemies. I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but he says to do it, so do it. Amen? Yeah. And that's, I know it's hard. Pray for wisdom and understanding. Pray for the lost to be converted. Amen? Bring them in. Like the song says, bring them in. Bring them in. Amen. Bring them in from the fields of sin and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you came to church this morning? Amen. You get anything out of this today? Yes. Well, praise the Lord. This altar is open for prayer as we sing our closing hymn.